Hey, you're just in time for Tuesday's episode of On Top and Hot. This is May 16th, and I'm John Zadar, your host. Now, what we do on this show is we focus in on hot OTC and penny stocks, always looking for stocks that have potential to make us money. And since they're penny stocks, they're on every market. As long as they're under five bucks, they qualify. Well, in any given month, we cover 40, 50 stocks. That's a lot to choose from, but it's also a lot to follow up on. And I don't get enough follow up because it's just a lot of stocks and I don't have a team. It's just me. So I am going to do some follow up today on three stocks I've already covered, but there's been a lot of interest in. I covered two here just recently and one back in January. So let's jump on into this. So what we're going to do is I will cover the general information here at the OTC markets and then we'll dive into the stuff I think you need to be aware of, the things that have changed, things that have come to light. This is BGXX, Bright Green Corporation, and I am stoked about this company. Stuff my pipe and let's smoke it. I am excited. This is a cannabis company here in America. Unlike any other cannabis company, any of them, this is the first and only federally approved cannabis company and there is a lot to share with you and I'm going to get to that once we get through the basic information. BGX actually finished the day at almost 91 and a half cents and she was down almost four percent and in case I failed to mention it this is a penny stock on the Nasdaq so it's free to get in free to get out doesn't matter how many shares you buy one or one thousand it won't cost you anything. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Ooh, less than 50%. Went from 1.1 million down to 483,000. Now, personally, I'm not bothered by that if the stock comes down because I am all over this stock. This is going to be a long hold for me. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to be adding to this for a long time. And when I get done sharing the information I have with you, I think you might want to do the same thing. Share structure for BGXX. Outstanding share count, 174 million. And I did go look this one up since I'm going in for a long hold. I want to know if she has too many shares. Is there a possibility of a reverse split? Well, I looked it up. She's got 53 million shares. It all looks good and safe to me right now. Financials for the company. Well, they don't have anything going on yet. They're building up for it like you can't imagine they are building up for it. Looking at those disclosures, ooh, we got three new ones here. We've got two POS AMs. These filings tell us that the company is considering a public offering. They're thinking about putting more shares on the market. Not a done deal yet, but this tells us they are thinking about it. And then we have an NT10Q. This is saying we are not filing our quarterly report on time. And by filing this, they buy themselves five more days. So by all rights, they should have their financials out by the 21st of this month. Looking at the news, this is where it gets exciting. We got two pieces of news, one that's historical and one that opens up a magic door I didn't even know existed. This grand opportunity I'm sharing with you began on May 1st. Bright Green announces historic federal registration and license approval from the DEA the ones that have the final word on cannabis. Confirming Bright Green as a bulk manufacturer of cannabis. Bulk. The DEA knows that this is about making money. Then we got a news press two days later and this was more than I thought it was. We're gonna just jump into this one. So this is what it says in a headline. Bright Green announces the launch of its EB5 website and program following the historic announcement. Well, I thought they were just talking about a website, so I didn't think it was any big deal. But I did scan down through here and then I started seeing things that just didn't make sense. So I dove into it and wow, what I discovered. Let me share this with you. They tell us here that Bright Green is the first and only publicly traded company on the U.S. markets to be federally authorized to do anything they want with cannabis. I mean it folks, anything they want to do with cannabis, they can do. Import it, export it, cross borders with it, uh, sell it to the medicinal market, the recreational market, make CBD oil. They can do whatever they want. Why? Because cannabis is legal for them. Nobody else, no one in the country has this freedom. I mean, no one. <laughs> Let me break this down for you. Think of a piece of wood, a two by four. Wood is legal. 
You don't need any permission to buy it. You don't have to be a special age. You just go in and you buy it. You can do anything you want with it, anytime you want, except maybe hit somebody in the head. But outside of that, it's legal. Now think of alcohol. Alcohol is not legal. It's decriminalized. Totally a big difference. Decriminalized says, yeah, you're allowed to use it if you follow our set of rules. Well, the federal government has neither decriminalized or legalized cannabis yet for anybody, for anybody. Everybody is getting state decriminalization right now. Everybody has to operate within a guideline of rules. So it's decriminalized and not legalized anywhere. These are the only people who have legal rights to cannabis. Now think of everything they can do here, folks. Really, they're going to be hitting the medicinal cannabis market. There are 38 states three territories and Washington DC, all legal for medicinal cannabis. They want those markets, but they're not just going to be selling cannabis. They're going to be selling cosmetics and CBD oil. They're going to be making medicines out of THC, which nobody else can do. They have the right to do anything they want, but I digress. Let's get back to this website. On top of all those rights, they also qualify for the EB-5 program and they plan to raise $500 million using it. Now I'm going to break down what this EB-5 is. The company has engaged a team of 13 commissioned operators across the globe to advocate its EB-5 program and plans to process 13 applications per week. That's 52 in a month, four weeks. Let's just round it down to 50, which will enable it to generate 573 available visas by May 1st, 2024, providing an immediate revenue opportunity for the company of $45.7 million per month on average. The company announced in February that it has commenced utilization of the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services EB-5 program to accelerate its 2023 growth strategy and generate significant capital for use in its greenhouse construction and operations in Grants, New Mexico. Now, what you've been watching is a 22-acre greenhouse. 22 acres. You cannot see one end from the other end. It is so big. Now, I went to the website here, and it is a website, but then I came back to go to the website again, and I hit this one by accident. Well, that says EB-5 program. This one says EB-5 website, and there's a huge difference. Look at what you get when you hit EB-5 program. Now, look, folks, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this big so you can see this. Look all the way up here at the top, an official website of the United States government. U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. This is the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Program. Under this program, investors and their spouses and all their children under 21 that aren't married are eligible to apply for lawful permanent residence in the United States and become legal green card holders if they meet one of these conditions. And the very top one is it in a nutshell make the necessary investment in a commercial enterprise in the United States. Now I'm going to expand on this, but that's what this is about. They are looking for investors outside of the country to buy their citizenship by making an investment in this company. Mind boggling, isn't it? All right, let's go back to that news because I got more I want to share. I want to jump over to this website and I want to pick it up from there folks. So we're looking at Bright Green Core EB-5 business plan website. Lots of information and I haven't gone through it all, but I found a bucket load of it. Really good stuff. Now, first off, here's that video you were just watching that I put up, but I spliced mine up. I took the background music out. So if you want it in its entirety, lots of information in there you can get quickly. Have at it. I brought you over here to share the EB-5 investor presentation but there's no way I can share everything I would want to share with you. This is 75 pages long and it is chock full of strategy, how they're going to make money, how big they're going to get. And it is exciting. I could not stop reading this. I am up to page 60. I got 15 more pages to go. Now I can't share it all with you, but I've got three pages I want to share with you. Multiples of four. That's it. Four, eight, and 12. Now, I may have to splice here, folks, because I may fumble around. They won't let me highlight anything here, and I can't remember everything I wanted to share. 
This one I remember, the company overview. This is all the benefits, all the advantages to investing with this cannabis company over any other cannabis company, and even more than that. They tell us here that through their work with the US DEA and building on their memorandum of agreement for the manufacture of cannabis and derivatives at unprecedented scale, nobody's going to hold them back. The company possesses a significant competitive advantage over all other existing US cannabis growers, having been selected by the US government to not only grow it, but manufacture it and sell it legally under federal and state laws. So they've got the rights to sell. They're not just doing scientific research, which is what everybody thinks a license from the DEA is. This is all about profit. They go on to tell us here that the company has significant intellectual property available to develop new medicines through the recognized FDA pathway. Think about that. Now we're outside of the cannabis companies. Now we're talking biotechs, biopharmas. They have an advantage over them. Those biotechs cannot touch THC legally. They cannot do any research with it. It's illegal unless they get permission from the DEA. This is the only company that has permission to work with THC. And they say they've got intellectual property, some IP, that they can come out with some medicines. And they would be the only ones who would be even possibly come up with a medicine with THC. And it sounds like the FDA has created a pathway for them if they're successful. They also tell us here that they have completed that 22 acre greenhouse, humongous, but it's little compared to what they want to do. This EB5 program, $500 million they're going to get from it, is meant to build a 114 acre greenhouse. Oh my God, it will absolutely be the world's biggest greenhouse. And there's a reason they're doing that. That answer is on page eight, and I've made it a lot bigger, so hopefully you can read this fine print. First, while it is DEA's intention to increase the number of registered marijuana growers who will be supplying the US, the CSA does not authorize DEA to register an unlimited number of manufacturers. The DEA is obligated to register only the number of bulk manufacturers necessary to produce an adequate and uninterrupted supply of these substances. So in other words, if a company can supply all the needs of the country, the DEA won't give out any more licenses. So BGXX wants to have the biggest greenhouse to supply the most marijuana so that they don't have to worry about any competition. They would be the only federally legal company in America that can work inside and outside the country through the country and they wouldn't have any competition because they were supplying an adequate supply. Now, is there a reason for this? Yes. This provision is based on the long established principle that having fewer registrants of a given controlled substance tends to decrease the likelihood of screw ups. <laughs> they call it diversion. You want to keep things in order. The less people you have involved, the less companies, the easier it is to keep things the way they should be. Now let's run over to page 12. What was page 12? Oh yes. This is about the EB-5 program and how these people from other countries are coming into the country by investing in this company. They tell us that the capital generated by the EB-5 program will be used to fund that huge greenhouse. Bright Green, through its partnership with Regional Center, will raise sufficient additional capital by selling private placements for $800,000 a piece. That's what these new immigrants have to pay if they want to get into the country, $800,000. But look how this breaks down. They have to buy just over 22,000 shares of the company stock at $40 a piece, $39.99. Yes, the shares were buying at 91 cents. They're paying almost $40 for, but that's not all. What they're getting are restricted shares. They cannot sell them because there's no market for restricted shares. How is this good? This is what goes on. They tell us up here that once that greenhouse is built and all the jobs are in place, they are going to register those shares and they won't be restricted anymore. And the, the people can start to sell them. Now they go on to say, we can't guarantee that the stock is going to be worth that at that time, 
but you can sell your shares nonetheless. What I'm saying here is folks, they're getting money, they're bringing in immigrants who are investing huge money into a company at $40 a share, which I'm sure somewhere along the line has got to help, even if it's right now, us talking about it. And they've got everything going on. I mean, we don't even know how big this is gonna get. I don't mean their greenhouses, I mean their business. They're gonna hit the medicinal market, the recreational market, they're gonna have CBD oils. They're going to be able to create any sort of products out of cannabis. And cannabis isn't just THC, it is CBD and hemp, and there are huge markets out there. So that's what I wanted to share with you folks. There are a lot of other pages here. Please do your research. All right, let's go take a look at that chart. She's had some bouncing around today. We are gonna be looking at BGXX on Thinkorswim, the free trading platform you get from TD Ameritrade. That's a six month, four hour view, which hasn't changed much since we looked at it just a couple days ago. She had a high back in September of $3.48, hit a low in January of 35 cents. At the end of January, she had a rip. She went from 53 cents to about a buck 90, came back down and has been rolling, ripping and dipping. And right now she is dipping. Now right here is the news that came out on May 1st that she had gotten that approval from the DEA. She had a nice bounce on that. And for some silly reason, she's been falling. Nobody gets what's going on here, folks. That's okay. This is a buying opportunity down here, folks. I'm not saying buy everything. Don't you dare. If you're getting into this for a long hold, do not buy everything you want right now. Buy 20, 25, 30% because it may fall some more. If she falls two months from now, you'll be able to buy more and you'll be excited that she fell because you're getting a better price. If you buy everything now, you only get excited when she rises and you just get your feathers ruffled every time she falls. Our oscillators say she is trying to steady off right now. Both our PPO and our MACD are underneath their red lines. Our MACD is trying to recover and boy, our RSI is on the floor right now. She is down there at 35. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. Well, she had that come down from that high of $1.81 and she's been falling. Even with that second piece of news that came out, nobody is paying attention to this. She had a low today of 90 cents and right now she is at 90 cents. She is virtually on that low. And it looks like she's trying to recover. You can see a couple green bars here. Things are starting to push up. But of course, I'm not just looking at this for a runner. I'm looking at this for a long hold, at least for me. You can play it any way you like. Five day, five minute, $1.19 five days ago. And she has just been swooping down to the floor. Right now we've got another bounce. She's gotten herself on top of the 50, still underneath the 200 day SMA. Osculators are the strongest they've ever looked. But again, I don't know what's gonna go on here. I know what should be going on, but I don't think people understand. And you know what? I'll bet you most don't even care because it's a cannabis company. And cannabis is just kind of falling off of everybody's radar because it's not really getting anywhere and they're not changing laws. So until laws change, God only knows when that's gonna be, this company has got huge advantage over everybody being the only company, the only individual to have legal rights to cannabis to do whatever they want, wherever they want in this country and outside of this country, wherever it's legal as well. I am excited. BGXX, do some more research. Go back to that presentation. Read all 75 pages. See if you get excited too. We're now gonna take a look at a stock we just covered the other day. This is ticker LTRY, lottery.com. That's right, the lottery, the scratch-off tickets, Powerball, you know exactly who I'm talking about. Well, the other day, some huge news came out. It was a dilemma. It was a problem. And if they could get over that hurdle, there was going to be probably a huge explosion. Well, things happened and transpired, but not exactly the way we were hoping. And everybody's asking, what's up? So, I'm going to show you what's up. So let's get the general information out of the way here first. LTRY finished today at 51 cents with almost 11% drop today. She too is a penny stock on the NASDAQ. So what was the company's relative volume today? About double. She jumped from 474,000 to 950,000, just under a million. 
share structure we don't know what the float is but we know it's going to be under 50 million which is the outstanding share count the financials this is where all the problems came in they gave us a huge number here of 68 million jumping from 7.4 million but the real problem was down here they were missing quarterly reports and they were given time to get these reports in and that time ran out and they were just about ready to be kicked off of the NASDAQ. They were going to be delisted, but they were given the right to appeal the decision and that's what they did. And they tell us over here, it was on March 23rd, 2023, that Lottery.com requested that hearing to appeal the delisting determination made by NASDAQ. As such, the company proposed to the panel a compliance plan that included a tentative schedule to complete the delinquent filings as requested. I thought it was hardcore. I didn't think it was tentative since they're giving dates because they tell us down here on May 8th, the company received a letter from NASDAQ notifying the company the panel had granted the company's request to continue its listings subject to the following conditions. Now that doesn't sound very tentative to me on or before may 15th which was yesterday monday the company shall provide the panel with updated financial projections for 2022 and 2023 which there are none there's nothing there beyond 2021 including the income statements and balance sheets plus on may 15th yesterday the company shall file with the sec the amended annual report on form 10k for the year ended december 2021 and the quarterly report on form 10q for the quarter ending march 31st and we had been told that they had already started on the annual report so things looked good well we waited for monday I told you all of this on Sunday. We were looking for those filings, looking for the numbers. I mean, we wanted the filings to come out so they didn't get delisted, but we wanted the filings to come out to give us those numbers because we had seen humongous growth. Well, a filing did come out yesterday. It was actually called a Form 10 QA. A QA. I'm not very familiar with these, so I had to dive into this. They tell us this is for the quarterly period ended March 31st. So we saw that they were working on that 10K, the annual report, and now we see them working on one of their quarterly reports. So here's the situation. Now there's a lot of details here and I'm gonna try to exclude the dry stuff and just give you the meat so that you can see what happened here. On July 6th, the company announced that the audit committee had retained outside counsel to conduct an independent investigation that revealed, among other things, issues pertaining to the company's internal accounting controls. And here's where they found the mistakes. On September 2021, the company entered into a purchase agreement with a major customer for the sale of various service credits with a total purchase price of $30 million. The customer provided payment prior to December 2021 in the form of a check accepted by the company for deposit. No, it didn't bounce. Uh, the company discovered that the service credits it had sold to the customer were non-transferable. Since the company was prohibited from transferring the advertising portion of the service credits and therefore could not complete the sale of such credits, the company canceled the transaction. In addition, the company had recorded a cost of sales related to this transaction in the amount of $10 million. So they got to pull $30 million off of the revenues, put, uh, take $10 million off of costs. These are some huge numbers that they have to make amendments with. And that ain't it. There's more. In an unrelated transaction, the company entered into an arrangement with another customer totaling $5 million. Due to the uncertainty of the collectability of the remaining accounts receivable, they had only gotten a half a million, the company should not have recognized any revenue from this arrangement during the year ended December 2021. So they got to pull another $4.5 million off the books. We're not done yet. Further, the company determined that approximately $2 million of prepaid advertising credits purchased during 2017 and 2018 may not be able to be fully utilized. As a result, the company decreased prepaid expenses by $2 million. And when you come down here, 
as previously reported, their cash was 50 million. Then you have to adjust 46 million off of that. Now their cash assets is 4.2 million. Looking at the revenues for the quarter of March 31st, previously reported they did $21 million in that one quarter. After they took all that money off that they didn't need to have on the books, 3.6 million is all they got. Now it seems to me the problem up here is when they're selling credits when they're selling service ahead of time. Things aren't working well there, so maybe they shouldn't do that. And that's all I really see here. I mean, there's a lot of information here and you can break it down further and further. They got lots of numbers here. But the bottom line, as far as I can see, they did not get in everything on Monday. They were supposed to have financial projections for 2022 and 2023, plus income statements and balance sheets. We didn't get any of that. They were supposed to give us a 10K for 2021 and a 10Q for March 2022. We got the March 2022. They made some adjustments. They fixed some things, but where's the rest? Are they going to stay on the market? I don't know. I'm expecting a letter from the NASDAQ. Maybe we won't even get that. Honestly, it's not for me to say what FINRA or the SEC is going to do. So, the other thing I want to point out, uh, did, did I actually have this colored here? Uh, I don't remember if I actually had it highlighted. The company stopped selling lottery tickets July of 2022. Did you notice that they quit selling them? I just didn't pay attention because I don't buy them on a regular basis. Sorry, lottery. <laughs> But they quit selling them in July and just started selling them again April 25th of this year. There was a huge bald spot there where they weren't doing anything, even let all their employees go. So they're back in the game now, but they don't have all their financials taken care of. So we are still in the red zone, folks, and I can't tell you what's going to go on. But I can tell you what the chart looks like if we go look at it. Let's go look at it. That is LTRY, Lottery.com, six-month, four-hour view. We can see she must have had a huge fall here because our 200-day SMA is barreling down, crossing over our low bubble of 15 cents, which hit at the end of December. Had a rip here from 15 cents up to almost 90 cents, 600% run in lots of days. Then come barreling down and she's been climbing. But right now she is coming down again. She's had lots of spikes and today she came down and she's laying on top of her 50 day SMA. And our oscillators look like she's still going to continue to fall. We don't see a lot of bright lights at the end of the tunnel right now. Our 20 day one hour view. Well, she is on an uptrend. She is pushing up. She is on top of the 200. She's bouncing off of it hard. So, I mean, even though she's had a hard fall, she's still in advantageous position. Our oscillators, not very advantageous. They are all pushing down right now. I would expect her to bounce off the 200, honestly. Looking at our five day, five minute. So she was running up. Hit a high here just a couple days ago of 75 cents, came down to a low here of 47, tried to level off in the middle, and she fell again. And right now she is down at 51 cents. Oscillators are pretty tempting and cool right now. Looks like she's going sideways. She's probably going to go back up over that 200, but what do I know? I'm just looking at the pattern here. She goes under, over, under, over. So that's what I would think. But the bottom line is what's going on with these financials? We got to get these financials in. However many it is, 10Ks, 10Qs, balance sheets, projections. If they don't do that, I really don't see how they could stay on the NASDAQ. If they do, everything's going to be good. And I would think this company would be excellent for a long hold if they can keep up with their financials. Come on now. It's the lottery. They've digitized. They are in most of the states in the United States, uh, I do believe 47 of them, and they're in 40 different countries. So they are going to be making money, but they need to stay on the NASDAQ. LTRY, it's a coin toss. The last stock we're looking at, another penny stock on the NASDAQ. This is We Trade Group, ticker WETG, wet G. We looked at this back in January. And I have not forgotten this company. Oh my God, the research and due diligence necessary to keep up with what they're doing. This is a Chinese 
fintech company, though they're doing a lot more than that. They just keep bringing out news about expansions, more and more that they're doing. So I'm gonna try to share all that's happened since we looked at it last, but I'm gonna try to keep it brief because we've only got so much time. So ticker WETG, she is a Chinese company. She finished today just under four cents with almost 15% drop. Now, because this is a major exchange stock, we have to concern ourselves with that price if it's under a dollar. Major exchange stocks have what they call a minimum bid price requirement. If you're under a dollar for too long, you can get kicked off of the major exchanges. You'll get a warning, you'll get time to fix it. You don't get it done, you're gone. Well, I have looked through most of the 8Ks because there isn't any news telling me it's happened. So I've had to go through every 8K looking and I don't see any notice from the NASDAQ about their minimum bid price. However, looking at the charts, it looks like they're close to five months under a buck. So I would think that'd be around the corner. Uh, I don't know why these are up here, transfer agent verified and independent directors, but they are and they're green and good. So what does WeTrade do? Well, they are a fintech company. They tell us here that WeTrade Group independently developed a cloud intelligence system for micro business. This is called the Y Cloud. Now I've jumped into one of their 8Ks to give us a brief overview of what the company does because <laughs> they do a lot. They tell us here that WeTrade Group is a global diversified software as a service provider for enterprises across different sectors. The four business segments of WeTrade Group are YCloud, WTPay, YHealth, and YG. YCloud is a micro business cloud intelligence system launched by WeTrade serving global micro businesses. They are supporting ma and pa businesses. And believe it or not, China couldn't stand on its own two feet without their ma and pa businesses. There are literally tens of thousands of them out there bringing goods to the people and taxes to the country. And China supports their little businesses. And that's what this is all about. Then they have um, WTPay, which supports multiple methods of online payment, eight mainstream digital wallets in over 800 countries to help customers quickly realize global collection and payment business. And they believe in their own words that they're going to capture 60% of all enterprise payments globally. I can't even imagine how much that is. They also have Y Health. This is a sector focusing on public health business, which engages in developing global businesses for biological health and medical enterprises. Currently, Y Health mainly focuses on detection and prevention of epidemic, daily health care, traditional Chinese medicines, and others. Now they've got a partner, they got lots of partners. They've got one partner that is selling over a million COVID test kits a day. So like I said, they're doing a lot of business and in China, a little business in China is considered a lot of business to us. And then finally, there is YG. This is new. Uh, this is the new energy business segment, which mainly provides tools and technical support for digital new energy industry in the Middle East and Central Asia. It's primarily wrapped around solar energy and charging using solar energy. And we're gonna see some news on that here in just a bit. Now they also want to expand into hospitality and the residential sector. They think that is ready to explode and that is what they're concentrating on right now. Let's take a look at that relative volume for WeTrade. Ooh, she exploded today doing over 400% going from 1200 million to 58 million. Shame it all went in the negative direction, losing 15%. Share structure. Uh, we got about 200 million outstanding and quite possibly could have a float of 173 million, but I really don't know. Financials for the company. Not as big as I expected, not near. At the end of 2021, they did $14.3 million. Got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers on these charts. Quarterly, not very impressive. They were falling three, two, one million. But look, they were holding profit during all of that downfall. Then when they kicked the revenues up to 5.3 million, they're losing money, 1.4 million loss. What about their disclosures? Oh, they got a ton of disclosures. I mean, really, every time they bring out a news press, 
they bring out an 8K. And I went through every single one of them looking for that minimum bid price requirement from the NASDAQ. Not in there. But they do have one. What is it about? This NT10K. We are not filing our annual 10K on time. This gives them 15 more days. Well, this was filed on the last day of March. Well, they are really late. That's the problem. And that's the hot water that they have to deal with right now. Now, let's jump on into that news. I did have this all highlighted, but I lost it. But I do remember what I want to talk to you about. We looked at this in January, somewhere around January 15th, 18th, somewhere like that. And this goes back to February 16th, close enough. So they tell us here that WeTrade Group announces cooperation with ErnieBot. ErnieBot is their version of ChatGPT. It comes from Baidu ChatGPT, which is the Chinese version. So they're incorporating that into their business now. Then they had a conference for this Green Planet Renren power plant. And then afterwards, they brought out plans on what they were gonna do. Now, I wanna share some information with you about this. We're not gonna go deep, there's a lot here, but this will give you an idea of what's going on. The Green Planet Renren power plant new energy project is jointly led by five companies. We Trade Group, FHT Future Technology, the Darren Group, Fujian Super Solar Energy Technology and Genoia Jivai New Energy Technology. Five companies all come together to create this project. Now, I'm not exactly sure what it is because I haven't had time to read all of the news, but I do want to read this part to you because it gives you an inclination of what we're talking about. This is solar charging. At the conference, an off-grid new energy power equipment will be set up on the outdoor lawn site to demonstrate the equipment's advantages. At present, the power supply equipment is mainly used in caravans, remote mountain areas, communication base stations, things as such. In this first phase, 15,000 sets of equipment will be launched. Based on the daily output of 90 kilowatt hours per set of equipment, the annual power generation of 15,000 sets of equipment will reach 8.4 billion. Now they put a zero there. I got to figure they're talking people. 8.4 billion people with this off-grid energy system that they're setting up on an outdoor lawn to show how it works. So I'm not real sure what this is. This is their YG sector, their new energy sector. The next piece of news, we have uh, VMade launched cooperation with Sky to build a new global payment experience for customers. They have their WT Pay, and one of their partners is VMade, and they're now working with Sky, making more money, doing more deals. Then they have another deal up here with Tencent Smart Retail. Are you familiar with Tencent? This is a huge company over in China. I remember when they first came on the market. Now, I'm not sure if they're still on the American market. This is one of those companies that did not want to reveal enough information to the Americans. Chinese just didn't want to tell us. And they were on the verge of being yanked off the market. So I'm not even sure if they're still here. But in either case, WeTrade and Tencent have merged their technologies. They're working together now. Uh, the next piece of news was the securities purchase agreement. This puts money in their pocket. Uh, they had set up these new series of senior secured convertible notes, which were priced at 18 million. Well, the company's going to get 16.5 million of that for themselves, and they're going to use this for things such as research, development, legal, even accounting fees. Then we get to that NASDAQ notice. This came out on uh, April 25th. So they tell us that they had received a notice from the NASDAQ for non-compliance, for not filing in a timely manner their 10K for 2022, which I just got done showing you. And they've only got so much time to do this. They've been given a deadline, June 20th of this year. If they don't get it done, they're probably gonna end up on the OTC market. But don't fret, not yet. They tell us here the application has no immediate impact on the listing of the company's common stock on the NASDAQ right now. And the last piece of news we got, this came out at the end of April. The company announces that they will be launching a global universal consumer card, the VM card. 
The VM card is a payment product developed based on the WT Pay system of WeTrade. It supports merchants like Visa, MasterCard, Apple Pay, Google Pay, Union Pay, Alipay. Is there anybody they don't include? WeChat, Grab Pay. Oh my God. They got all the big names there. Credit cards. I mean, everybody. So they've got another product. So the company is doing a lot. They're growing new energy businesses. They're getting more fintech out there, new cards to put in people's hands. They're supporting micro businesses. They're doing a lot. I would expect the revenues to start growing sooner or later, but we need to get that annual 2022 filing. Not only is it good so that they don't get delisted, but again, we're going to get some numbers and that's what we really want to see. Speaking of looking at something, let's go look at that chart. E yeah, it's not a pretty chart, right? I know, I know. This is WETG Retrade Group six month four hour view. Now, six months ago, we had a high of $2.33, but ever since then, she's been dribbling and drooping all the way down to this low of three cents, which looks like it happened today. Now, look at all the volume that's coming into the picture just here recently. Lots of volume on this positive day, but all this volume is selling off. And then today we had a big spike. Speaking of big spikes, this one back here ran from 22 cents to 36 cents. You've got like 80, 85 percent gains there. This went from 15 to 37. You're looking at 130, 40 percent gains. And would you believe this one too is 100% from 6 to 13. Lots of nice jumps here. And right now, she's trying to get over that 50-day SMA. Oh, look at all that volume after market. Holy cow. I want to get a better look at this on the one-hour chart. That's going to tell me a lot more. Let's focus in on that. Look at this, folks. She was underneath all of her SMAs. The nine-day SMA hit a low bubble today, and I am suspecting that is an all-time low. It absolutely is. That is an all-time low. She's never been this low before, and obviously that means something because look at the volume increase after market. We didn't see any new filings. We didn't see any new news. It's the low bubble. She is bouncing off of that hard, going from three cents up to almost six cents. You've got about 80, 90% run right there. She has fallen back some, about 50% of that big run, and she's on top of her 50 with the nine day trailing behind her. This is really looking nice. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is having a crossover right now. MACD is on top of her signal line. Green bars are accumulating, getting bigger, and our RSI is actually climbing. Five day, five minute. Ooh, she's been under that 200 all this time, banging her head on it really hard without any success, but that's a very steep incline. She tried to get on top of that. She would just slide down and fall. But today, after that low bubble, she bounced and crushed the 200, skyrocketed up, and she is well over 50% hanging on to that surge. Way up here, she's brought her 9-day and her 20 with her, and look at that 50-day SMA, a rocket across that 200-day SMA. That is a golden cross. That is a power move right there, folks. Oscillators are cooling off a bit after that run, but wow. What happened? The low bubble got people excited. So we see a lot going on with the company. They're not making a lot of money. They've got strong assets, but that low bubble's got people excited. Uh, you may want to watch WETG tomorrow. With that sort of increase after market today, yeah, I would think so. Remember, folks, there's a lot of information I didn't cover on all the stocks we've talked about. So please, don't just take my word for everything. There's a lot more to know. Do your own DD. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.